So my name is uh, Evgeny Ismailov. I work as a data practice lead at Provectus. Uh, so I'm in data engineering since uh, 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 2012. Yeah, then I, I had a burnout and I switched to project and product management. Uh, yeah, I worked there for three years. Then I re recovered and now, now I'm, I'm back to back to data. Uh, as uh, of personal interests, I am uh, interested in kite surfing. Are there any kite surfers here? No, oh, that's, that's a shame. If you're interested, yeah, just go talk with me after the presentation. Uh, okay, I'm fond of skiing or roller skating. Any of it here? <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, so let's go to the uh, set part. Uh, so it's a cr crisis right now, and uh, it what it looks like uh, by the vision of Mid Journey and ChatGPT together. Uh, yeah, uh, this is how it looks uh, like from the vision of statistics uh, for 2022-23. We see a lot of layoffs, unfortunately, yeah, almost uh, half a million, and uh, there are more to go. And it's not only uh, uh, this on is it, it's about the tech uh, companies, but it it's not only about the tech, unfortunately. Uh, however, as, as we see, uh, for the last 12 years, uh, we had a lot of crisis, and uh, so it's not something uncommon. And uh, basically, we need to adapt to it somehow. So let's la take a look at what happens with the projects in the times of crisis. Uh, first of all, everything that's not essential, uh, it's like goes to to the health fireplace. <laughs> yeah. uh, and everything that's high costs, low return, and uh, everything that has high high risks. So what we ca what can we do uh, to overcome this? And uh, like it's obvious, more business value, uh, fewer expenses, and more transparency in terms of risks. Okay. It's pretty clear, but but how can we do it? Uh, just do it, yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, first, uh, what strategies we can apply? Uh, the first one is enable business to gain value and uh, yeah, make it effectively. So let's find out uh, where we can get the value from in, uh, from the perspective of data engineering. So uh, I really like this slide. It's about the data maturity uh, and uh, uh, how it connects to the competitive advantage, like which is basically value. Uh, and as we see on the left side of uh, this graph, uh, um, there are anything from data engineering, engineering that explains you what happened before. Yeah, and on the right side, it's more about uh, the AI and what will happen in the future. So. Uh, Basically, uh, any of your companies are located somewhere on this curve. Uh, most likely, yeah, somewhere here. Uh, especially uh, regarding data engineering, it's it's somewhere here exactly. And uh, yeah, so there are two strategies uh, we can apply. The first one within uh, the place within this uh, box, we, you can go higher. Yeah, and. Uh, uh, for example, improve uh, like reporting capabilities of your company. Uh, su suggest more advanced business intelligence tools and so on. And for the right side is uh, mostly about AI and uh, what will happen, for example, fraud detection. Yeah, and uh, what happens, what's going to happen if uh, supply chain breaks. Yeah, so one of the companies from this supply chain is going to be eliminated. Yeah, what's going to happen? How should we respond? Uh, uh, again, that's th th that's just a framework, but uh, how it works? Uh, uh, what we can we do to work with that? Um, Okay, we are all like technical people here. Yeah, we like coding, frameworks, um, uh, all, all this technical stuff. Uh, however, uh, actually, business uh, don't care about that much. Yeah, and we uh, like for them, it's really hard to understand how something complex and expect, uh, expensive help them. So what we can do is just like have a mind shift from code to uh, money to business. Uh, 
and unfortunately, I, I see like a re very few cases of that, and it happens pretty pretty seldom. Um, so, however, at the same time, most of the money, most of the value, most of the, I would say, uh, personal and professional growth happens in this in this field. At Provectus, we have something like uh, like innovation proposal from work. All my friends from Provectus are gonna ask me, yeah, we have this from work. Actually, actually, it works like in the small scale right now. Scale right now, but uh, yeah, what we can do first, we need to make up an idea, and um, mm, there are several approach to this. The first one is uh, if you talk to a business, you, uh, you have these problems in your head, and whenever you see new technology, like it's uh, like the brain just works that way, that you try to like find out uh, the way to help them. Yeah, find out solution not only for yourself, not only for your local problems. Yeah, and uh, the next one, uh, the next approach is uh, basically uh, just learn cases. Yeah, for example, uh, I know that uh, in Harvard uh, there is a, a like kind of a business school when they just like uh, uh, check cases case by case and they just improve uh, the understanding of uh, how how it all works. Okay, you have an idea, let's say you have an idea, and there are tools for that. Uh, uh, then you can post it internally, yeah? Uh, then you will find the supporters, I hope that you will. Uh, it happens in our company, for example, and uh, then you reshape your idea, because like all those people are, not, are pretty competent, and uh, some of them are business people, some of them are uh, like technical people. You reshape the idea, and you pitch it to the business. Yeah, okay. Uh, let's say that everything goes fine. Uh, you build on some kind of MVP. You demonstrate that it's, it's a really viable and uh, useful product. Yeah, and then you get the feedback, support, and you can basically uh, use it as a small steps and uh, with controlled risks all the time, and you can like um, improve this spiral, add more people, um, like b basically make make this idea viral in your company. Uh, yeah, and uh, by doing this, you're kind of, kind of controlling risks. You're not involving too much people, too much resources at the same time. And uh, yeah, that's um, bad idea is gonna drop there. Good idea is gonna be uh, productionized. Okay, the next one is about uh, delivery. Yeah, and uh, you know, uh, in this crisis times, we need to be uh, like as uh, effective as we can. So yeah, I'll be talking about AI here. Yeah, because like everybody is expert in AI right now. Uh, I think that the there are very few of you like who use it, uh, but uh, I really encourage you to try it because um, like it it. it it's a uh, no-brainer. Uh, first of all, uh, it helps you with any form of writing. Uh, and uh, I would say that you can write documentation, you, cry or you can write uh, emails. And uh, for example, um, if you have the idea yeah, and you want to like, spread it within the company, you can like, write in a rough way and just uh, throw it to chat GPT and it will uh, give you a beautiful version of your idea. And uh, at least from the Lexical perspective. Okay, uh, creative brainstorming assistant. Assistant, I would say that uh, we all have a problem with the uh, uh, white list. Yeah, so b when we don't have ideas and when we need to start with something, and this, uh, like, you can ask uh, like in free world, charge GPT, Notion, uh, Bing, uh, and uh, you have something to work with. You have something to start with, and. Uh, yeah, for example, recently in projects we uh, ca came up with the idea of naming of a project, and the name of the project was just like so colorful and interesting that like we we, we took it. Yeah. So next one, formational synthesis and summarization. Uh, okay. Uh, Let's say you uh, like, um, want to fuse ideas from one book with another, and you, as a result, you can uh, you can get something really interesting. And uh, also, for example, you need to have a summary of the book or summary of the article or anything like that. And uh, it 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 really helps. For example, when I read a book, 
Yeah, and I don't remember uh, some ideas, so I get into it and I ask for the summary and can quickly recall what I was reading. Okay, and the next one is search. Basically, uh, Bing uh, as a search assistant is just perfect. Uh, I know it's like I it sounds uh, strange, but uh, whenever you start using these tools, you're like really becoming much more productive. And I'll show you on the, on the next slide. But, but um, so okay, you can uh, generate code. Uh, it's uh, really doubtful for for many of us, like and a lot of skepticism on this way. But it's becoming gradually better and better all the time. Uh, and we the Copilot X it just it is it, just uh, like much 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 better. Uh, okay, code explanation, code transformation. I would say just an, uh, an example of it, uh, like the, the the value of it. For example, you can see that Stack Overflow traffic is down like per 15 percent month to month. Yeah, recently, it's just because of those tools. Yeah, I mean, people people just go to ChatGPT, go go to Pilot, Copilot, and, and uh, or use Copilot to like get the answer. For, uh, yeah. Okay, and this is how the actually uh, the ac accuracy of uh, ChatGPT uh, or Copilot improves in the in the recent. Uh, uh, not only years, yeah, but, but months. Uh, this is the old data, but you know, we have, I guess, uh, more accurate. It's not going to replace us, yeah, at least for a while, I guess. Uh, and uh, it's uh, really useful in terms of coding use cases. Uh, in data engineering, there are a lot of uh, repetitions, uh, a lot of uh, work that you, like, boilerplate work, I would say. And uh, for example, you can uh, create schemas from the uh, different files like JSON, CSVs. You can uh, do create data validators, data tests, and uh, like prototype projects. Like for Docker, Docker files, Docker Compose, and Terraform, uh, like you, you just describe, uh, and uh, like most of the times you get a really valid and uh, good uh, place to start with. Okay, so, uh, I can talk about the chat GPT forever and all those tools. Uh, like, uh, if you're interested, if you're curious, just uh, go talk to me after the meeting. Yeah, I'll be happy to discuss it with you. Yeah, and uh, the outcomes. Uh, although it's uh, like it's, it's a time of crisis, I think that um, there are like really useful tools that can help us right now. Yeah, so just and uh, one of the main uh, outcomes, I would say that think about your business, think about the value you can bring them. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Hello, my name is Roman, and I want to ask you, as I understand, uh, you used uh, ChatGPT for coding or Copilot for coding uh, a lot, and uh, my question is, uh, did you manage to check uh, how much time you did you spend for debugging this code? Uh, yeah, I, I'm, I, would, I wouldn't say that I use it all the time. And I use it mostly for uh, something that's really bo boilerplate. Yeah, and I agree that it uh, generates code that's like hard to debug. But for example, some small functions yeah, like you, you can just uh, take a look and like you are a professional, and it's it's like like driving a Tesla. So you don't rely completely on that. You should like uh, hold your uh, hands on the wheel. Uh, so uh, the main use case for you when you are uh, one hundred percent uh, can rely on on the, for example, compiled output. Uh, you mean an example? Yes, uh, use case when you can 100% rely on uh, its output. One, I wouldn't say that. I would rely at 100% ever. <laughs> yeah, at least for a while, for now. Hello, uh, thank you for your speaking. Um, my name is Vladimir. Uh, one question: uh, When you use a plugin which uh, connected with Chat GPT, you gave access for all your project code, is it secure? Uh, for ChatGPT, you mean, or yeah. specifically? Uh, we are investigating this uh, right now, and uh, I know that for ChatGPT recently, they announced that, uh, uh, so it's all private, 
but nevertheless, I would rather go to uh, uh, Azure OpenAI services that all have has the same model and they uh, have much more strict uh, requirements about the data privacy. У тебя был слайд про инновации с кастомерами процесс. Там, наверное, уже не переключишь, ну ладно. Как ты бы формализовал отношения с кастомерами, то есть за что будет платить кастомер, за результат и как формализуется идея? Какие-то, может быть, фреймворки? Слушай, ну... Так, перешли на русский, да? Внезапно. Окей, окей, все нормально. Uh, вообще, слушай, обычно заводится некоторые, типа, сначала идеи MVP, и на нее выделяется определенный бюджет. Ты должен за время MVP показать, что действительно как бы доносишь ценность до, до компании. И дальше вы это раскручиваете по спирали на следующее, следующее SOW, а мы вперед. Mm, насколько большие итерации? Месяц, два. Ну, no, it, it depends, uh, говорится, от сложности проекта. Бывает, что там и за неделю можно управиться на какой-то… Особенно сейчас, знаешь, появились uh, вот эти сценарии, которые с использованием как раз OpenAI. И получается, что там uh, можно очень, не знаю, очень быстро прототип, прототип запилить. Вот. Ну, очень сильно зависит от uh, конкретной, конкретной ситуации. А, а именно с инновациями это работает? Uh, не, не совсем, ну понятно. Когда, Слушай, ну, то есть uh, в инновациях большой риск того, что не стейлнет, того, что ты не сможешь донести тот результат, который хотел. Uh, Слушай, как всегда, как всегда, it depends. Для каких-то инноваций, если у тебя уже есть наработанная, не знаю, библиотека прототипов, да, и ты такой, типа, окей, мы попробуем этот прототип для ваших сценариев, у тебя достаточно высокая степень уверенности, что это заработает, что это заведется. Вот. Okay, спасибо. Mm. спасибо. Спасибо за вопрос.